And let's see. If, if, okay, good. There, we're back. Okay, we're. St I started over again on Facebook. Sorry, guys. So what's going on is that last September, as you all know, um, the Lord has me in this Lady Jesus Handbook study right now. Last year, God had me drive around the nation and pray for our country. Video upload. Okay, and um. So what happened was uh, it started going into our into the country, and so the Lord started speaking prophetically to me over the nation of the United States, and and He had me map what's called spiritual mapping around the nation, and as I did that, God was speaking to me about the United States of America, and He also started speaking to me about the world, and I you know, He's been talking to me about the world for years. I am operating. I operate one of the gifts God's given me is the gift of prophecy, and. Everyone who is a believer in Jesus Christ, who's filled with the Holy Spirit, has a gift of prophecy. That's the absolute truth. Who's filled with the Holy Spirit? Because the Bible says, John chapter 14, Jesus tells his disciples, true believers, disciples oops, are true believers in Jesus Christ. And he says that those who are true believers in Jesus Christ will have the gift of prophecy. And I want you to know that that's in John chapter 14. I'm going to lay that out for you just so you could stand on it because you're supposed to receive the Holy Spirit. And if you haven't received the Holy Spirit, you better put in a request to receive the Holy Spirit. I don't want you to have less than God's best for your life. And the Holy Spirit is God's best for your life. So Holy Spirit, John chapter 14, here we go. Uh, Jesus says to him, you know, they're, they're like, oh no, Jesus is going to leave. And Jesus says, no, 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 I'm not leaving you as orphans. He says, um, and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. This is for all true believers. Hey Judah, who are believers in Jesus Christ. Hi Coda. You know, I just want you to know, cause see, Many of us need deliverance. Many of us need healing. Many of us need signs, wonders, and miracles. And I want you to know the Lord wants to release that gift and that power in each and every one of us. He wants us, but it comes through the Holy Spirit. See, the disciples, the true believers in Christ, the true followers of Christ, Jesus says, will be manifesting these signs, wonders, and miracles. That Those gifts, hi Cynthia, are for all of us, okay? All of us. And I can say that because I've been walking in those gifts. It's I, I'm not perfect at them, but I've been walking in them. And I want you to know I don't get throw out the baby with the bathwater. I just go, okay, Lord, Let's do it again. Let's try it again. Okay, we failed that time. Let's try it again. And it just, you know, have that um, spring back into it, you know, where you just know that God is telling you something and you do what he says and the supernatural happens. The supernatural happens. The supernatural. Let me give you an example. Okay. I always map. I always map. The Lord tells me to map and map is, I ne never knew what mapping was since I was in law school. I think I started driving around buildings and praying over them. Like the Israelites prayed over, uh, Jericho and like the way, um, Abraham mapped the promised land. He walked around the promised land. God told him to go and walk around the, the rim of the land. So last year I did that around the United States, but that's not the first time I've been doing it since I was 25. I've done it around hospitals and courthouses and just name it. I mean, if I have a job interview or whatever, I, um, this house that I bought, I bought off of Craigslist and I was, the Lord had given me a word in 2000, I think it was 2009. It was time to own property through Oral Roberts. So I'm like, Oh, that's a word for me. And I held on to it. And and then I kept pressing in trying to buy buy a house and it just did not happen. And I looked at hundreds of houses and I remember one day, it was a Saturday morning, our realtor was going to show us some homes. And so he had um, some houses in store and one was on this in this block. Three of them were on this block that I live on. And so he said he was going to bring us here. So I woke up at five in the morning and I came out here and I drove around the neighborhood and prayed. I drove around seven times and I claimed it and I prayed and we looked at three houses that day and none of them worked out. None of them. We put in a huge offer uh, above asking down the street. This is when the market was low and they did not accept it. 
they did not accept it. So I was like, okay, Lord. And I kept pressing and pressing. And then one day um, it was like, you know, I would get discouraged and God would encourage me and say, get back up. What are you whining for? Go, 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 go. Keep going, girl. Keep going. And the Lord would encourage me, you know, and just rebuild me and, and strengthen me. And so, and it was actually uh, at that time it was, I was reading a book by, uh, oh gosh. And I do have to thank him for this. It was uh, by, uh, what's his name? Um, Joel Osteen. I'd get discouraged and I'd read that book and next thing I'd be encouraged and I'd go out and try to do it again. And so what happened was it was so powerful because one Saturday evening I was like, God, I was laying in bed. I'm like, God, you promised me a house. You said it was time to own property and the Lord said, go on Craigslist. And I went on Craigslist and this house that we live in was up for sale the next day by owner and it was going to be open house. It was the first time she was doing it. So my husband and I went to church and at church, my husband prayed over it. And then he said, God, Jane really wants this house. So will you bless her? And then we came and knocked on the, the front door that was here that we replaced. And we opened the door and, and no one had come. It was only us. And supernaturally, we knew this was our house. We bid on this house that day and we paid $425,000 for it. And, um, that was her asking price. We signed the contract. We were the only ones who came. She sold us a house and it, and there was more challenges after that. But we moved in in October of that year, September 30th of that year in 2010. And after we had moved in, the house supernaturally started skyrocketing in value and it's gone up 300,000, over $300,000 in the last seven years. I've lived here seven years. I mean, who could ever get that kind of an investment. Who could ever get that kind of investment? It was God, it was God, it was supernatural, it was mapping, and now God is saying, sell the house, I want you to go to the nations, I want you to be mobile. So I'm selling the house, throwing uh, my stuff into an RV, and going to the nations, and he wants me to get a good RV. I was gonna get a cheap little $20,000 RV. I'm like, okay, well, RV, I can live in any dump. And what well, was a nice RV, I saw it. But you know what? He wants one with a TV screen on the outside. And because, you know, when you build a tabernacle, because the word he gave me was you go from, he went from tent to tent and from tabernacle to tabernacle. And we're going into that season in American history where the ministries of God are going to have to go tent to tent, tabernacle to tabernacle, because God is a mobile God. God wants to become mobile. We are a mobile people and God wants to become mobile and he wants to reach the lost throughout the nation and he is saying revival is coming on this land revival is coming on this land revival is coming on this land and as we press forward and press into the promises of God we're going to see an outbreak of revival and God personally for me God has going to have me go and set little fires around the nations uh holy ghost fires I'm not talking about physical fires it's funny because last year when I was mapping and there were times where I was calling down fire and then when I, I'm like, I strike a match here, I strike a match here. You'll see the video and I put it out. I'm sitting like in Montana striking a match and in Oregon. And and then when I come back, they were all on fire. I'm like, God, I hope I didn't set those states on fire. But, you know, when you do operate in the prophetic, sometimes there's a physical manifestation of it. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father God. And... I'm going to have that video out soon. I'm still editing it uh, of the mapping journey around the U.S. And I have a mapping journey in, in South America, too. And I'm just saying there is a season of the supernatural that's coming and it's being released and it's being released to God's people. And it is available for every single person who's ready to catch, be allowed to be set on fire. Every person who wants to be set on fire, God will set you on fire. If you ask the Lord to set you on fire, he's going to, he's going to set you on fire. I just see it right now. I see people, I see, I have a vision of someone wearing white with their arms stretched over their heads like this, just worshiping God, worshiping God, worshiping God. And God is ready to set us on fire. And there was a, um, there was a word God gave me, Lord, help me not keep dropping the anointing oil in Jesus name. Um, there is a word that the Holy Spirit told me right, but right as I got on, I'm going to look up that scripture because I think the Lord wants me to read that word over you guys. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, here we go. It's in, I believe it's in the book of Acts. Uh, give me a second because this one, I don't have.
There we go. Acts 319. Acts 319. So Acts 319 says, it's a beautiful scripture. It says that, um, no, oh, one more page. You know, we have to remember that this is the time of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was released at Pentecost in Acts chapter uh, chapter 2. And what's important is that for us to understand that we're in the season of the Holy Spirit. I mean, since Acts chapter 2, the Pentecost, the early church, to today, it is time of the Holy Spirit. And there's a refreshing of the Holy Spirit that God wants to refresh His people. You know, like when you go on the computer and you hit the refresh button? God wants to hit the refresh button in our lives. He wants to hit the refresh button and re redo his thing in us to refresh his people and um yet now brethren i know that you did not didn't uh wait oh, oh, oh. 19 sorry uh, repentance therefore and because repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the lord and that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before. So God is saying if we repent and con and convert to our faith into him, he is going to send us. He's going to blot out our sins and he is going to send us times of refreshing. There's just a season of refreshing that God wants to bring and it's going to come as a result of the repentance of sin. When we repent of our sin, God is going to send refreshing. He's going to send seasons of refreshing, times of refreshing. You know when you just feel refreshed? I don't know if you've ever had that experience of feeling refreshed. You know, I remember when I was in um when I was mapping around the nation and you know, I was living in a van and I wasn't feeling very fresh at all. And I take, you know, showers at truck stops and stuff. And I remember going to this river in New Hampshire, or, or was it Vermont? I think it was Vermont. Oh my, or it could have been New Hampshire, but it was so refreshing. I went to this river and I sat in the river and it was so refreshing. Ah, so refreshing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can post a video here, a link at the uh, below. To, uh, just to see the refreshing that you get from this fresh water that came from the mountains that were like it was melted snow and it was a hot day and the and the water was just perfect it was june july first or something and it was just this time of refreshing and i felt so refreshed in my spirit you know, we get this heaviness that comes from living on this planet. You know, we get a heaviness from living in the matrix. And if any of you have watched the movie Matrix, you know what I'm talking about. We get this heaviness from living in the matrix. The pollution of the world around us weighs us down. I remember when I lived in downtown Los Angeles and the Lord had told me to wear only white so I would only wear white. But, you know, I want to prophesy something before I say this. I declare and decree and prophesy and speak to the winds that times of refreshing are, e are here in the name of Jesus. This is a season and a time of refreshing in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree and prophesy and speak to the winds that this is a time of refreshing. A Holy Ghost refreshing. Oh, I just see a Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit take a veil. It's like a, a veil of refreshing and just put that veil over his people there's just a veil a beautiful lace veil that is falling it's so gentle and delicate and it's just a, a thing of refreshing thank you holy spirit that's coming over his people i just want you to receive it now wherever you're at that you're getting this veil of refreshing over you by the power of the holy spirit thank you holy spirit gift and pr gift of precious gift of god precious gift of god we thank you person of god the third person of the godhead we thank you for this precious gift of refreshing refreshing you're giving us. I remember when I was living in downtown Los Angeles, the Lord had told me to wear only white. So this is in 2005. Uh, yeah, I think it was five. And so five or six, and I would only wear white. And I lived next in these gorgeous apartments right next to the 110 freeway and there would be so much soot. You know, you can go and like touch your car and there'd be like this black grease that would be on your car or everywhere, everywhere there would be this black grease that was coming from all the transmission and the engines on the freeway. There'd be this black grease, like powder, 
powder that was in the atmosphere to think we were breathing this it was just so ugly 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 and i lived right next to the 110 freeway not knowing about this and and when i was would wear white i would lean on on my car or whatever i touched would get black grease on my dress that dirt you know it's like oil and residue and dirt all mixed together oh it was gross and it would get on my white dress and the lord would say even if you are pure by the fact that you live in a filthy environment it will affect you. It will affect you. Think about it. You know, your mind is spiritually pure. You make a point of not watching, you know, uh, ungodly sh TV shows or ungodly um, things, you know, or listening to ungodly things. And, you know, you keep yourself pure and walk in holiness. And then here is, you know, you're driving down the street and there's this big billboard with, sm with a smutty ad on it. You know, you can't help but look at that. It's a huge billboard right in front of your eyes. And, you know, sometimes you have to turn your eyes away from things that you see. And so there's junk in our environment around us. You can't help it. I mean, I go on Instagram to look at my niece and my nephew and some perversion or porn will pop up. And I'm like, how on earth? And I have to go in and delete out of all of them. And I want to see less of this. I want to see less of this. I want to see less of this. And I have to go around saying, I don't want to see this, you know. And so I have to delete those. And even then, new people pop up. So in our community, in our environment, we are going to see things that violate God's heart. And when you are holding the Holy Spirit in your spirit and you see that it's offensive to the Holy Spirit. And so I have to plead the blood of Jesus over that. And I know I'm not intentionally trying to sin or anything, but the point is that it's there. And the Lord says, by the mere fact that you live in a polluted world, you will be polluted. And so we have to understand that. And that's why we constantly bathe in the blood of Jesus and allow the Lord to wash us, wash us clean of all of the impurities. And the Lord is saying he wants to bring a refreshment refreshing a refreshing idiot he wants to hit the refresh button in your life he wants to hit the refresh button in your life and he wants to bless you the lord wants to bless you as you seek his face he wants to bless you and some of you who are watching just need to put your arms out like this in front of you Put your arms out like this in front of you and just allow the Lord to supernaturally and say, Lord, I'm ready and have him supernaturally download to you his blessing, his presence, his covenant promise. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord. Je I get the Holy Ghost all over me as I say that right now. Come, Lord. Just say that with me wherever you're at. Come, Lord Jesus, come. That's what idia rotia karia rotia ka means. That's what the Holy Spirit told me. That's what the Holy Spirit told me. Idia rotia karia rotia ka means come Lord Jesus, come. Come Lord Jesus, come. Come Lord Jesus, come. It's funny, I say it in English and I get the Holy Spirit. I, I say it in tongues and I get the Holy Spirit. Idia rotia karia rotia ka. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Father. Idia rotia karia rotia ka. Seasons of refreshing. Seasons of refreshing are coming. Seasons of refreshing are coming. You know, we've had this volcanic activity. We had tornadoes last year. We had earthquakes last year. And these are all birth signs. But God is saying, I'm going to refresh my people. My people, I'm going to refresh my people. I'm refreshing my people. You can count on it, says the Lord. I'm going to refresh my people. I'm refreshing my people. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your faithful Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Praise your Father. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Praise your Father, God. Thank you, Lord. God is good. God is good. He's faithful. He's enduring forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. So as I was saying earlier, those of you who missed, it's actually on the first video from today, uh, last September, August, September, after I had mapped the nation, God said that the volcanoes were going to erupt. And I was sharing that with all of you guys. And all since then, all the volcanoes have been erupt erupting, not all. A lot of volcanoes have been erupting. Hawaii erupted. Guatemala erupted. Hawaii erupted last month. Guatemala erupted a few days ago. Um, others have 
heaven erupting. It's in the ring of fire. And clearly these are birth signs. It's God saying the birth is, the earth is getting ready to, the earth is giving birth is what's going on. The earth is starting to break down. It's starting to break down and it's, it's supernatural. God is having the earth break down because he's earth was never intended to last forever. God is going to renew and refresh the earth. That's part of the season of refreshing is that God's going to hit the recycle button on the earth and the earth is going to get refreshed and there's going to be a new Jerusalem that comes out of heaven for God's people so that we're stepping into that season. We're in that season and we're stepping deeper into that season and God wants to do the supernatural thing but people of faith people of faith we have to stay in that place of faith we have to stay in that place and recognize we are the remnant we are the remnant we are the remnant we are the remnant and god is saying he's turning our nation back to himself because we are praying for our nation to be a godly nation a sheep nation and the lord wants to do a great and mighty thing so i prophesied these volcanoes last august and i i, I don't want glory this is just to say that god says what he's going to do before he does it like I was walking this morning in the park and God said turtle and I'm like turtle the next thing I'm walking down there is a turtle walking in my path I'm like oh look turtle I never see a turtle walking in my path over there at that park I've been walking there for like years and here's this turtle I'm like God just said turtle so uh, you know it was just another little confirmation to me again Jane you know I'm with you and the Holy Spirit is with you and when the Holy Spirit is with you the Holy Spirit reveals to you what's gonna happen before it happens you know as a believer we start sensing these things before they happen you know as true believers in Christ, we sense, oh boy, something's coming up. Something's coming up. I just feel it in the spirit. I just feel it in the spirit. Something's in the atmosphere, you know, and, and really all of it right now is culminating into the last days. We are pressing into the last days. We are moving forward into the last days. And these last days, I, folks, this is the best time to read the book of Revelations. It's all there. It's all there. It's all there. You know, the book of Revelations talks about what's supposed to to happen in the last days. The book of Daniel talks about end times and what's supposed to happen in the last days. And a lot of people, and I haven't been following prophecy, but a lot of the people who do follow prophecy, follow prophecy there's end times prophecy, certain things that need to happen before uh, Jesus' return. And those things have happened. Some people say, those things have already happened. They've taken place. The historical markers that need to happen have taken place. Now, Jesus has personally told me that this was like a few, two, three weeks ago. He said, when you bring in the final harvest, I will return. Jesus will return when we bring in the final harvest. So we are in the process of taking out. That's why, you know, I'm going to be living in an RV, driving around, bringing in the final harvest. Because when I drive around and God will say, go talk to that person and tell them about me and ask them if they want to receive the Lord. And it's that kind of thing it's like just being raw and real it's you know they said that when Billy Graham died Kim Clement prophesied that the next Billy Graham was going to be a double mantle it's going to be a male and female and that they were going to have the anointing of Billy Graham a double portion anointing and they were going to be wild for Christ. They were going to be wild for Christ. The evangelism of these last days is not like the evangelism of, of what we saw in the last generation. It's not going to be this polite, you know, middle mainstream evangelism. It's going to be this wild, radical evangelism that has a manif demonstrative manifestation of miracle powers. There's going to be demonstration miracles to show that God is real. I mean, that is why a lot of times when, I, when I've done miracles, I've done them on Facebook because I want people to see that God is real, that God is real. It's not about glory to the person. It doesn't even matter. I mean, like God will glorify us, but that's not why we do it. We do it out of obedience because we want to honor the heavenly father and we want to pass on to the next generation, a great faith that they will be able to walk in miracle power because they're the final end time generation that I can tell you. And so I just want you to know that it's time for us to pass on a greater faith than the faith that was handed to us. You know, the Bible talks about arrows. It talks about arrows. It says, the Bible says that having children are like having quivers in our arrow. But you know, one of the points of that is that where a man stands and he 
pulls out his arrow from his quiver and he shoots. He, he shoots the arrow into the distance. So that what we're doing is shooting our children into the distant future. And we want to equip them with the fire of God. I want our children to be fiery arrows. Not just arrows, but fiery arrows that are on fire for Christ. That are filled with the Holy Spirit and are shot into the future. And take the fire of God into the future. Fiery arrows. That's what I prophesy, declare, and decree over the children of the camp of the Lord that we are shooting children into the future who are filled with the fire of God and will walk in the anointing of God to walk in signs, wonders, and miracles, healing of the sick, casting out demons, and multiplying the bread and the fish, and raising the dead. So I just know that God is able to do that in this next generation, but we can't give them what we don't have. So God wants to pour that spirit into us as we go before him, and he refreshes us and refreshes our faith, refreshes his presence presence in our lives and it's gonna be a great day of the Lord God is gonna do a great and mighty thing so I better wrap up God bless you guys this is Jane Eddie Wessel Lady Jesus signing out I love you and I really want us to start believing not for miracles for ourselves but that we're miracle workers God, I mean, if there's any tenant of our message and this, um, you know, the Lord told me uh, a year and a half ago that he was going to release an end times dispensation and we're going to breathe white hot fire into the next generation. This is a new dispensation for the end times. The embrace movement is a new dispensation of Holy Ghost for the end times, the refreshing in the last days. And one of the important axioms or the foundation foundation principles is that the believers of the last days will be walking in signs wonders and miracles that we will true believers will have signs wonders and miracles following us and so we are to believe for that we are to believe that if we lay hands on the sick they will be healed we are to believe that if we pray for the dead they will be raised now you always have to run that by God because um, with the raising of the dead there are people I've wanted to pray for to raise from the dead before and God would say no 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 that's my will I've called him to heaven. And so you got to check it with God. So um, God bless you guys. I love you. This is Lady Jesus Jane signing out. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless. Bye.